was going to bring us up the right way and, and give us great ethos and, and respect for other people and what have you and show us what a we've founder had that. We've had challenges where we thought, how are we going to get over this? But that's where the family's strong. That's where we're at our best. That's when we come. You don't, the three of you don't need to be dealing with the same issue, the same problem. Mm. You know, like quite often, like Chris, Chris was a count. So like, there's, I mean, there's, as he said, there's babies coming in and stuff like that. I, I never really dealt with that bit uh, because they were dealing with it. Mm. So the, the, it didn't need me standing there looking in. I mean, what they needed me to do was be at the cold place. Earning. Earning. Yeah. And, that, and that's what I've done. But well, what we never done, we never buried our heads in the sand. No. So instead of them bringing the war to us, we took it to them. Yeah. And they respected that, I'll be honest with you. You'd have to be a false then yeah. to, get, to get anything past. Yeah. And to be honest, we've become a little bit selective because we really want to work with people. Uh, you know, the, the, a lot of our client base, I, I would go out and the fact that you've still got the business and you can go to sleep at night and know that you've done a, a pretty good job, I think that's how you measure success, mm. to be honest. I believe every business owner has a story to tell. Through seeking true, authentic insights about the entrepreneurial journey, I provide a platform for our peers to share their stories and inspire those that listen. This is the County Business Talks podcast, powered by Picture Book Films. Okay, welcome to another episode of the County Business Talks podcast. For the first time on the podcast, I'm welcomed by three guests on the show. It's almost like a little bit of a panel, to be honest. They have all joined their family business, started by their dad, Dennis Tugwell, and a business partner, James Walker, in 1971, at different stages over the last 40 years, and have taken a refrigeration company to a full-service facilities management company that is now TSS Facilities. I'm delighted to welcome three brothers, Andy, Chris, and Steve Tugwell. How are you doing, gents? Very well. Very, very well. well. Yeah, 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 very good. Good, good to be here. Uh, it's also, I know, I know we've, we've obviously known each other for a while. We've spoken a couple of times about coming on, and it's great to have all three of you here, and it's going to be a, it's going to be a fascinating conversation, I'm sure. So let's, sure. Um, look, we're going we're gonna to jump straight in. So the TSS story started in 1971 um, when your dad launched a refrigeration company. What, what, tell me a little bit about like what was life growing up and what, what was it always your plan to get involved in the family business? No, never at all. Really? Yeah, it was never at all. I wanted to be an hairdresser. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you believe it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, my dad said, no, you ain't doing it. You ain't doing that. And um, he said, what do you want to do? Uh, and uh, so uh, I went into the car trade. I went into it as a car mechanic. Yeah. Absolutely useless. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely useless. Got the sack from that within about six weeks. Well, the manager of the of Wadham Stringer, then well known, it's called Wadham Kenning today, yeah. and uh, he uh, brought me in the office and uh, he said, "I thought uh, you passed your first year's uh, apprenticeship because you did block release and that stuff." And I said, "Well, I think I have." He said, "No, no, no." He said, "You failed everyone." <laughs> so. He said, um, look, he said, you've bought a humour and something to the garage. We like you, but we can't keep you employed. So he said, we're going to give you six weeks to go and um, find yourself a new job. Well, in those days, it was very easy. You walked out of one job yeah. into another, a bit like today, that sort of come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I walked in and uh, I became a plumbing and heating engineer in, in those days and started off an apprenticeship doing that and loved it yeah, uh, yeah. and loved it you know you I, I was in a garage where you had to clock in and clock out I was like a caged lion yeah, yeah, and yeah. all of a sudden I was on this building site where I was able to express myself and there was a, a great banter on building sites in those days yeah, yeah, yeah. and what have you and that's how my career started all right that's interesting because I like <laughs> With a hairdressing thing, obviously that was my thing for a little while, and and going into that. But similar, I guess to the listen to the car. Thought I was crap at hairdressing. Although I run a salon, I got into it wanting to be a hairdresser. It was rubbish. They basically said that exactly the same to me. Like that, you're great with people. You're great. At, I was front of house. You're great at doing this, but actually the cutting the hair, not not so much. So yeah. went down that different route. But you go, I guess like for everything in life, like one of the things I talk about and. 
podcast so much about failure or things not working out and changing direction in life is such a important thing because it builds that resilience, isn't it? It does. Yeah, yeah it and does. you sort of go go out there. And, what, and, and yourself, Stence, that Steve? What? Well, I, th- I was obviously uh, I'm four years younger than Andrew, yeah. so I, I was still at school when uh, Dad started. So I'll be honest, I'd, all I wanted to do was get out with my mates. Yeah. I was pretty much oblivious to uh, the, the start-up of uh, Night and Walker, as it was then. Yeah. I, I used to, the old man used to have me in the weekends, uh, and I used to like clean the, like, it, it, he used to sell a lot of second-hand fr- fridges and freezers yeah. to different butcher shops and all that, and I used to go in, wash them down, polish them like car polish, leak test them and stuff like that, and get a bit of pocket money. Yeah. Um, but I, I was oblivious to most of it, I was, I was just, Looking to get my bit of cash, so I could go out <laughs> with my mates, and, and that, that was me really. And uh, but I never intended to uh, go in there. I went off, and uh, I, I, a gang went on to the building. I've, I've done a roofing apprenticeship. I went self-employed, yeah. um, really pretty independent right up until the hurricane. Yeah. Done, done really well, uh, but the following year, I was mortgaged up. Uh, I was only getting a three day week because everything had been re-roofed yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, the old man sort of pulled me in and I was like the oldest apprentice in town again it was like <laughs> a restart and it, at the time it was quite sort of soul destroying but I gradually got into it yeah. and uh, went from there really is it that I always sort of talk about where that, that sort of thing that sort of stuff you see in that work ethic from your dad and running his own business, did it not drop in like, at some point with all three of like, to think that he's got that, he's doing that, and he's built something. He, he was from a grafter. Yeah, he yeah. He was a grafter. So that, like, that sort of work, that strong work ethic, which sometimes, uh, you know, maybe gets lost sometimes on the younger generation. Now you sort of look, at, and obviously not, not, not pigeonholing people, but you sort of look at that, and that, that strong work ethic. Like my mum and dad were never really entrepreneurial, but they did show. John, I'm a I'm a grafter. I've yeah. always have been. So they did stay that strong. So do you feel that you've got that from? Absolutely. You know? I mean, definitely. My, yeah. My, yeah. my dad. I mean, for me, as I say, I was a bit younger. I was still at school. Mm. Not really. St- I, was, I was still a kid, really. I mean, I had that mentality. But mm-hmm. uh, from about the age of fourteen, he was saying, like, you know, what what, what do you want to do, Steve? What do you want to do? I said, oh, I don't know. He said, Well, I'm telling you now. He said, uh, When you leave school, you're not hanging around the house and uh, when I get up and go out the door, you're coming out with me, and you're not coming in till I come in. And if you have to stand on the street, that's, that's what you'll have to do. Really? Is it, yeah. Wow. Wow. And that, 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 I guess that's the thing, isn't it? Like yeah. that, that. That's instilled in you from a young age. So like, because one of the things with running a business is obviously you, uh, over four years of you guys are doing it. I guess you're a test to that. Like, go through tough times and challenges, and you've got to have that that strong work ethic and that thing that you've got to knuckle down and uh, and crack on. You've got to so be prepared to roll your sleeves up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But do you know what? Some of the best laughs I've had in my life have been at work. Yeah. You know, I've had some real funny days, seen some amazing places and what have you. So, yeah, I think it's work, but it's not. The three of us together know. combined have, have experienced some unbelievable times. Yeah. Bad, good and bad. Yeah, 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 I'm you sure. Know? Well, t- well, I'm assuming that like, you you alluded to earlier, Andy, about the you know that banter on the in the um, in the building like, the building industry, industry yeah. and that type of thing. I guess like you obviously knowing you guys really characters and you know great people people. I guess and w- love having a chat and that sort. But so do, do you feel like that obviously camaraderie? And, uh, does that come from home as well, where yeah. that yeah, camaraderie yeah, yeah, between yeah. the three oh, of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was that a funny household. Yeah. It was a funny household. What, what we had, we had our grandparents who my mum and dad got the house for them next door. Right. So uh, we was very very lucky. We had th- the three of us had a fantastic childhood yeah. because we had an grandparents living next door to us yeah. and they were the funniest couple ever <laughs> and he worked within the uh, hotel business all his life he worked on the sister ship to the Titanic which was the Olympic oh, yeah. he'd been to uh, Mobile Alabama in America three times before he was 15 Gosh. he went there uh, in the 
depression and also when alcohol was banned over there. So he, mm -hmm. he went all to all the speakeasies and stuff like that. And we've we've got all of his books as a towel boy and serving on the Olympic. We've still got all that now. Nice. And uh, yeah, he 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 had a fantastic life. He went in the army and worked as a batman to officers, and and then came out of there, worked at the Ritz in London, the Savoy. Wow. And then met our grandmother, his wife. Uh, in service, in in hotels, she was a chambermaid and what have you. They got together, eventually moved down to Brighton, and set up their family. And he worked in the hotels down in Brighton. He worked in the Metropole, the old shit, wow, uh, wow. and what have you. So yeah, he had a he had a very. They both had a, ve a very interesting life, but they was very very funny. There was always great humour, yeah, yeah. and. That rubbed off on their children, which was our mum and yeah. our uncle, and also our father, who had, you know, a great humour, but uh, had suffered adversity in his life uh, uh, and what have you. And uh, um, he was a child of a of a broken family in those days, which yeah. in those days was something different to what it is now. Yeah, yeah sure. And uh, he, you know, he he. he when he he went in Bernardo's uh, uh, for a while, he was a Bernardo's boy, right. so he knew what when he had his family, when he when he had the children and what have you, there was nothing else but his family. That was it, and and uh, he was going to bring us up the right way and and give us great ethos and and respect for other people and what have you, and show us what a family was, yeah. and demonstrate that. And he always did. He would have moved mountains. He, he was that kind of character, and it was great because we we grew up in a, a two two bedroom house, didn't we? Yeah, and we was all in the same bedroom, all bed guys up in the like road, the three right? bears, like the three <laughs> bears, and we all had dinner together, so it was a, a tight family. It was a nice time. It was a great time. I, lo I loved it. I loved it. Apart from when he come home clubbing and used to wake me up <laughs> <laughs> at two o'clock in the morning. I used to, he, he was a bugger to go to sleep of a night. And, <laughs> and mum and dad would go, go to bed, go to bed. And he never would because it's nine years between me and Chris. And I can remember coming home clubbing one night. And uh, I, I see him there asleep. And I, I, uh, I don't know why I'd done it. But I, oh, well, I'd had a few drinks. But I, I, I woke him up. I said, come on, you're late for school, you're late for school. Watched him get dressed. <laughs> and then he said, no, I'm only mucking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the look on his face was like, when I woke him up, the look on his face, like, I'm going to bed tonight early. <laughs> <laughs> he, was like, he said, oh, I can't believe it, it's, it's morning already. And yeah. anyway, he went back, and about four days later, we're sitting at the table having dinner, and he went, here. He said, did you wake me up the other night? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This is the gold that we need to be called on here, mate. That's yeah, brilliant. Yeah, so, so we had all that sort of stuff going on. I love so, that. Because, yeah. that, again, back to, I'm, I'm half Greek secret, so family is a big thing for Massive, me as yeah, well. Yeah. When you like, you know, I remember growing up, you know, just typical Greek families. Like, my mum's Greek, my dad's English, and they're, they're, they're almost polar opposites. My dad's this quiet guy, and my mum's from a big Greek. F don't know how they, that ever happened, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I love, I, love the, I love the fact that, we, and I still do it with my kids, all sit around the table, yeah. eat together. Yeah, yeah. So important. So important I, yeah. I, I, I love it, because that, but I, I'm keen to, especially taking over and uh, th th did your dad sort of have that part as part of the ethos of the company from early stages like that it sort did. of family environment within the company when you went and worked y y i mean as a as a teenager listening to your father on the phone at that age when you when you think you know it all but you actually know nothing mm. i used to think oh, i don't know why you're doing that i don't know why why you're talking to these uh, people like like that, you know, they're working for you. You should be uh, remonstrating a bit more uh, and what have you. But he didn't. That was that was his way. He uh, he got the best engineers in Sussex mm. working for him. But it was a team effort, and they all, bar none, they all adored him. They all had mm. huge huge respect for him, and they showed that when he when he passed. You know, they was all there, and they was all. Uh, uh, you know they'd moved on in their their lives and and some of them had retired and what have you yeah. but they all took the time to uh, attend his funeral very rare that you would 
find ex-employees today mm. going to a go an ex-governor's uh, funeral mm. uh, and what have you, you'd, you'd get the odd few, but you wouldn't get the amount that turned up to Heaves, bar none. Wow. And, and clients. So, and clients. Mm. Yeah, they, they loved him. And they used to call him the, the, the matchstick man because he, he used to turn up with the matchstick out the corner of his mouth and what have you, and he'd do business, and his word was his bond, and that's that's how we did it. And they, uh, the clients loved him, the engineers loved him. Yeah, they all had they all had great time. But that was his ethos. It was a it was a family unit. At that particular time, in my teenage years, I couldn't understand that. Mm. Uh, it, I had different ideas about business, but then you know nothing. Then. It's, a, it's such a learning. Well, I find that fascinating because obviously cu culture. We'll come on to it a little bit later. I'm, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about that. But oh, like, it's just a fas it's a fascinating thing. Like, I, I look at again. I always allude to the salon because I I've got the culture wrong. I went in as a, my first business and was like, I'm I've gone in as a boss and not a leader. So didn't cut hair. So they looked at me. Like, what does he know? But I found it really tricky. I found it hard to get, and I, I think I look back now and I, I closed that business, lost money, and look look at it. But I think the main reason it didn't work was because I got the culture wrong. Now I look at to other salons. Like I had Mark Woolley on here recently, who runs the electric salons in in Brian, you know, yeah. massive company, done global product yeah. brand. But his salon was around the corner from mine, and I talked to him about it, and because I'd go around and we'd swap colour and stuff like that, and help each other out. You go and he had this buzzy sell on it. Was loads happening. So he had a, an amazing culture. He looked to him as a leader, and yeah. mm. and I got it wrong. So f that's why one of the reasons I love talking about it so much on here, and just listening to you talking, obviously about your dad as well. But and and the feeling I get from how the company is now, just as a the bond that you guys have obviously got as a family. But that's how I sort of imagine it to be in, in TSS, still like that family ethos just running through the company. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, 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 you know, we, we very much try to keep that. Sometimes it's difficult because yeah. you grow and, the, cu and it, the culture changes when you bring new management in. But mm. below all of that, it's, we, you know, anybody that comes to TSS is part of that team. Yeah. That's the underlying thing, and and we look after you. Got to be reciprocal, yeah. uh, and what have you. But we look after you. We treat you with the utmost respect, and uh, we expect the same back. You know. But it's it's we never really, n well, I never have. I've never looked as if I'm in this ivory tower looking down. I would I would no. hate that. Yeah. I would hate that. It's not always, they're always open. Always. You know, people can always come and talk to us. And we're not frightened of mixing in. I mean, you still go on site and uh, get stuck in, don't you? If you see I get stuck in. I, I was on like site do, with yeah. the, the guys over the school summer holidays having fish and chips, bought them fish and chips. And we sat there and we had a chat. You know, they, they, they put the tools down. We had a chat. We had fish and chips on a Friday of a lunchtime. It was lovely. It's yeah. great. See, that, that for me, like, ta there's a couple of things taken out of that for me. One... I heard you mention a couple of times about respect, which is obviously really important. Like you, you, like you just mentioned about your dad and the, the respect that obviously previous staff had for him, clients, whatever. And that, that is so. But it's got like you mentioned, it's got to be reciprocal, isn't it? Yeah. Like yes. you yeah. respect them, and, yeah. and you give them an opportunity. They respect you back, and that's how a, a yeah. strong culture is founded, I yeah. guess, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be a two-way street. That's yeah. not just with the staff, that's through with the clients. We've with got clients, clients where we've got long-standing relationships. And it's, it's you know, and, and, uh, we certainly respect them and we know they respect us and, and they're, they're great to work with. And that's yeah. what, you, you, you know, work's hard, hard enough as it is, so you, you want to go in and enjoy it. And, uh, yeah. and with, with clients, with a lot of our clients, well, once we get a client, they, they normally stay with us for a very, very long time, mm. you know. And to be honest, we've become a little bit selective because we really want to work with people who we like. I love that. And, uh, you know, the, the, a lot of our client base, I, I would go out and have a drink with most of them, mm. or nearly all of them, in yeah. fact. And uh, they're great people to work with. And, um, you know, like you said, respect. They respect us, we respect them. Mm. And we get on brilliantly. That's like, you, you look at, I guess, 
again, we'll come on to COVID in, in a little bit and the, the implications of that. But I think certainly stuff that comes out come out of COVID a lot is that exactly and people look at business, they looked at their lives and they've gone, actually, one, I want to work with people I want to work with. I want to spend time with the people I want to spend time with. And, mm. and you end up not always that it's from a financial point standpoint but it's just like actually if you don't fit into what our culture or our ethos is whether that be a client or or a member of staff whatever that is then you're not right for for, for us yeah. i think yeah. what you get into and i've had this over the years and i always i always say this to the to the guys and girls who we work together and what have you i i've had people over the years who tell me, tell us what they think that we want to hear. Mm. Actually, I don't want to hear that. What I, all I want is the truth. Mm. That's all we want. Because if there is something wrong, you can work with that and you know how to, if you've got the presence of mind to, how to fix that. Mm. But you can't fix anything unless you're told the truth. Mm. And you you know that's happened over the years that you get people who think well I'm going to tell him what he, oh, I think he needs to hear I don't need to hear that at all all I want is the truth if they're not enjoying it mm. tell me tell us uh, and what have you and if the client is got something it doesn't like something that we get tell us we can adapt we can put that right don't have a hidden agenda just tell us mm. uh, and we can work with that I think, again, a, a big word that, that, or a lot that come out of, again, I guess the last couple of years for me, authenticity and honesty. Yeah. And massive. a bit of transparency. Yeah. It's such a... It is important. So important. It's massive. Mm. You th- I haven't got the time. We haven't got the time. Mm. And uh, well, I'd love to have the time to to uh, to mess about. But we, you know, listen, we, we're here. It's the biggest, apart from our family, it's the biggest thing that we do mm. every day. And we and we live and breathe it. Even when we go home, mm. we're still living and breathing the yeah. business and and the clients and and everything that goes with it. So you might as well do it in the best way that you can and enjoy it. I would hate. I've I've met people, talked to people that dread going into work in the morning. Well, that why must would be you awful. carry on doing yeah. that? You know. That must be you, it must be an awful thing to yeah. do. I, we're, we're yeah. I personally, and I know these two, we've never we've never had that. We've had challenges where we thought, how are we going to get over this? But that's where the family's strong. That's where we're at our best. That's when we come together. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, you'd have to be a false then yeah. to get to get anything past us then because we're so strong as unbelievable. Let's, let, let's delve into that a little bit then because I'm keen to like, talk about obviously some challenges over you know been involved for nearly 40 over 40 years and it all comes involved with different times talk to me about some of the challenges over the last few years and obviously as business partners having family I, I guess you alluded to it there how important that is to, to have that yeah. backup and know that you're all in it together to, yeah. to do it but just yeah talk to me about some of the challenges mate and where does Covid fit into that as well like well, I think uh, COVID w- uh, wasn't uh, really a problem for us, was well, it? It, no. it? It was in some sense, but our think our biggest challenge was in 1999, late 90s. And, early and 2000. we, at that time, were doing work with a large supermarket chain, and they were putting the pressure on us to, or all the contractors, to shave their prices by up to a, a quarter. And we had quite a lot invested in that contract at the time. We had, we were looking after about 30, 30 plus stores. 34. 34 stores covering Sussex and Kent. We had a man in each store. Uh, we was actually bigger and turning over more then than we are today, or about comparatively. And, uh, but the margins, there was no margin in it. So mm. then to be told by uh, your client, you've got to shave load of costs uh, or leave the contract. We, we took the decision to um, walk away from it because it wouldn't uh, it was running hard to stand still so we yeah. moved away from it but it was uh, it did carry a large percentage of our turnover so moving away from that then brought other difficulties in the business because we had to uh, shave back our overhead 
and to be honest because we were probably a little bit naive we didn't move as quickly as we should have done and we're trying to protect people in the business and everything but that caught up with us and um, we got in a, a shocking financial state you know we was uh, trading well we, we got we was trading in Solvent in Solvent we? really and we wow. were being charges protected. on our houses yeah we had charges over the houses and it was uh, an awful time and uh, we had a bit of luck we had a few friends who, who gave us a bit of support didn't we yeah yeah and um, we we had CCJs coming in we had bailiffs coming in twice a day and it was it was stressful and we had no money we were robbing Peter to pay Paul um, but what we never done we never buried our heads in the sand no. so instead of them bringing the war to us we took it to them yeah and they respected that mm. they loved that there was a time when we did we was sort of tech uh, you know we was people ringing out asking for money or something well we'll check check if you're in the place next week and then yeah. you realize that week and you weren't going to honor it and i thought i can't carry on like this so like andrew said we took it to them right we owe you this this is what we're going to do we're yeah. going to pay you this this and this over this amount of period and they they didn't all, not all of them liked it, but they I think they respected it. Mm. And eventually, over a period of time, we worked out of it and we got stronger and stronger. We built great relationships. We got confidence back in the industry because a lot of that confidence had been lost. But what we always wanted to do, we wanted to keep the company number that my dad created. Yeah, mm. we, it would have been easier for us to bust it and start again the next day. Couldn't do that. Couldn't do it. And we had. Uh, some of our friends in our supply chain we wanted to do them out of money either we wanted to make sure everybody got their money back and that's what we've done it was a harder route um, oops, a young way, <laughs> it was a ha harder route uh, tough um, and it took longer than we expected didn't it well we've never really chose the easy route have we? we never have no so when covid came along when stuff like that comes along, you can feel the hairs on the back of your neck come up because it brings those senses back to those times. Mm -hmm. And I sort of put my, I ducked in a row quite early for COVID. And actually, we, we sort of went for it. That's and that's what we had. The, we had the experience that time, which we never touch wood experience again. But we did have the experience that we could draw on that was still raw mm -hmm. to be able to get us through COVID. So that, in actual fact, COVID was quite a pleasant ride, wasn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't that. say pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 was it was a lot easier than 1998, yeah. 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 I, th I think yeah. as well, what Chris says, w when we went through that period, there was a lot of uh, procedures missing from uh, structures <laughs> and stuff that we didn't have in place. And uh, now when stuff like that comes along, we've, we've got so many sort of structures and yeah. uh, processes and because we've sort of been there before, we, without sounding cocky, you, you sort of, it reminds you that and you just, you just batten up the, the doors a bit tighter and yeah. uh, foresee, you look forward a little bit further, you can sort of, I mean you couldn't, I mean COVID took us all by surprise but uh, you know, not sure what's going to happen. The world's in a mess at the moment. Not yeah. sure what's going to happen, but you know, we've already got a plan B yeah. there. You know, we're not waiting till oh, didn't know that was going to happen. We, we've already got that, things in and place, that, and that's that's experience. That, 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 that's great, yeah. Sorry, we did have great support from our uh, staff as well, didn't we? Which oh, fantastic! Yeah. Yeah. It, it wasn't just us; it's they, the they come team. on board with us, and they was all they was all in the same direction. Yeah. As us. Fully beyond. But, yeah. but going back to them times, a, a lot of work, uh, we, Andrew and myself, we, we were working, uh, doing a lot of weekend work, uh, but we never draw a wage for that. So, so, because uh, because of the industry we're in, a lot of out of hours work and all that. Anything evenings, work of hours, it was invoiced, but there was no labour cost to it because it's me and Andrew doing it. And that all went back to bottom line. So, so you was doing like a seven day a week, but you was only drawing a crappy wage, really, weren't you? At that yeah, time? yeah. I mean, yeah. In, in the nineties, I was going up to London with you, Woody, wasn't I? Yeah. On Sundays to to do the water tanks at yeah. Billingsworth and places like that. 
and we weren't charging our labour. So you knew if you whatever you costed mm -hmm. that out with all basic other than a few materials, it was profit, and that all went 100% back into the business, getting us back to where we needed to be. So I'll um, there's a couple of bits that come out of that for me. One, one, the communication, I guess, with suppliers and people like that when you're in them tough times comes back to something that I, I value I hold very dear which is integrity I think everything I've tried every, whatever I've done in business to know that I can go into most rooms and they'll made up by because you do things with integrity and that, that's something that comes for me comes across quite strong listening to you guys talk talk about that but I'm, I'm just keen to like from a mindset perspective because I know I've, I've been there as well and and that where does that like that ultimate resilience come from when you're actually up against that CCJs you've got you know you said Bailey's coming round knocking on the door where, do, where does that resilience from the come old from man, man. Mm. yeah it's just a mindset it's just a mindset he was just a uh, he was a loving father but with a tough exterior mm. and uh, you know he was a he force the story behind him <laughs> apart from his childhood was he worked for a company as a service manager called Knight and Son Refrigeration, which was owned by a guy called Jeff Knight. And um, it was a successful company. And what that done, that opened up a department called Prime Meat. Now, Prime Meat, the whole thing behind that was, in those days, you have to remember this is in the 70s, mm. is that they was flogging chest freezers to households but when you bought the chest freezer you got it full of frozen food that was the concept mm. that was the sales pitch frozen food was a new concept then yeah. frozen food was uh, never heard of and um, that went ballistic that just took off and uh, they got very very big very very quick and because they did they overstretched their self financially so they brought people onto the board who wasn't quite who they said they was and all of a sudden that got wrapped up but then that got bought by a company that it, that then got bought, bought by a company called B Jam and as you know yeah. Day Iceland yeah. so that's where that all comes from right wow well, okay that's a start, didn't yeah, bloody hell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, again, like, looking at and listening to you, you talk, and uh, another thing I wanted to take out of what, what you mentioned about that with the team coming on board, again, especially like through going through them tough times and listening to that, again, it all relates back to culture, doesn't it? Like, they, they, yeah, you, only culture. Get, you only get that, that buy-in from staff <laughs> and then people to go, like, because you must have had staff at the time, obviously at Coke with people worried and oh, but, yeah. but, mm. but yeah. then I guess talk to me then about as leaders that what are you what's that communication to your staff that everything's gonna be all right, we've got this is the situation we're in. Yeah. We, we did actually, I think we communicated well. We um we used the phone system that we bought three years prior to that and uh, started having conference calls which we'd never used before <laughs> yeah, on it. Yeah, so that, yeah. that, I never heard of Zoom. I was yeah. like, no, 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 that, exactly. Like so, so um, what we've done, uh, <laughs> the, there's a, the, the three of us and James, um, uh, and we we had a talk every day of what was going on, where we were, what we were doing. Uh, we also spoke to some other uh, business leaders, weren't we? That's right. Yeah, yeah what, what I did, I, I put together, or we put together, a little group, and we, we had a conference call at five o'clock every afternoon, every working day that we had a conference call. And what with, we with did, with other, with business, other businesses. businesses, so uh, I, I spoke to Vince Pemberton of yeah. Rivervale, Vince came on board with it, uh, Mark Dodd of Limpio, spoke to him, Anthony Edwards of EMC, and um, I can't remember who else. And there, there was there was herself and James, who's now the MD of TSS. And what we did, because none of us knew what furlough was, what the government was doing, mm -hmm. it enabled us to talk about each other's business. What are you going to do to get through this? What are you? What are you doing? What are we doing? 
should we all do that together? And what it done, it, it built a bond and it built confidence and all of a sudden we was getting through this, weren't we? we this unknown territory. Ideas, I mean, yeah. I furlough, I thought that was a horse racing term. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I've never heard of it you, before. You and me both. Uh, uh, and um, what we did, the the, the companies and, and TSS all really shared information. shared information and got each other through it. And oh, yeah. we and we formed that lovely bond. And we used to look forward to that five o'clock call every day. And because Vince is in, a, in an industry which is... Uh, governed by the RBLA, I think it is. Um, they have very good structure on what you should be doing uh, during mm -hmm. COVID, and we and we was getting information there and using that as an example of what we should be doing. So that's how we got through it. Love that, and that, again, that for for me certainly, I I love the Sussex business community. As a hub, been really fortunate, I think, to integrate into it. But I think one thing that, again, back to COVID, what come out even stronger was that sense of community that yeah, we mm. all, you know, it was unknown territory for so many people, but to all reach out and realize it's actually I've got your back or come here, let's have a chat about this, and, yeah. and that support network because you are you, you know, you're in a it can be in a dark place at that point. A lot of businesses really suffered. Like fortunately, like you said, you guys um, come out of it okay, but a lot of business some didn't make it through and others were in a really tough point but to have that support network and help you through it is so um, so, so important then what we did then we used to have regular conference calls with all of the staff mm. and bring them up to date with what we're doing what's going on mm. and giving them some comfort so they're not sitting at home thinking well what's happened yeah we didn't want to do that you know they're they're vital to yeah, us. Yeah. And in actual fact, we brought a lot of them back quite quickly because at first we, we put most of them on furlough. Uh, we kept a small uh, handful of engineers because they'd still uh, the service didn't work, they needed to mm. do. But after the first couple of months, it was apparent um, we needed to bring more back. So we was slowly bringing them back in and work, work was getting busier and busier. And I think from August, it really took off, didn't it? Yeah. And, um, you know, great great for us. I know there was other businesses really struggling and really felt for them, yeah. people, especially in hospitality and places people like that. But um, we had a demand there and, and the, with the compliance, because a lot of what we do is compliance and boilers and water treatment. We do a lot of hospital that. trusts as well. So that mm, compliance was right. needed to be Still be done. Yeah. And we had to bring them back quite quickly. So um, from that point of view, it was good for the employees to get back to work, get back to what they're used to doing. But in between that time, as Andrew said, we did communicate with them. We used to do, sometimes we used to get them all on the phone at once and talk. Other times we used to get them on by department, uh, department. so you might have got the water treatment department or the heating and electrical mm. refrigeration, and talk to them more in a more smaller group. So they might feel like us, because sometimes when you're in a big group, you don't always want to ask questions. Yeah, so yeah sure. We went into smaller groups uh, for their comfort. And yeah, I think we've done uh, a lot. We, there's some things we could have done better, but um, always, it's, yeah, it's it's always. it's a learning process. But it wasn't a textbook. You know, there's no textbook to get you through these things. So yeah, um, yeah no, no, no matter how many people I've had on this and, and talked to them about it, no, no one in their business plan had global pandemic. No, 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 no. What's no. my what's my risk no. assessment for global pandemic yeah, when yeah. that that hits? Well, no, we, no yeah, one had that. We, it's funny because we've done a business plan. We did before just COVID. Plan, yeah. We yeah. just finished this five-year plan. And we almost <laughs> <laughs> we threw out the window. Yeah. It up, yeah. 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 Scrap that. Let's uh, let's yeah. uh, let's, yeah. let's start again. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah, you can well, look, I, I want to just take me back a little bit, and you guys come on board at different stages. But was there like a was there a vision early on to become TSS and have a like, full service? facilities management company was that something quite early on or wh when did that sort of come of come about we was it's like anything really i'd love to say yeah, <laughs> yeah. but in in honesty no we was in a contract with with a, a very large supermarket which said at that particular time we want you to do this that this mm -hmm. and that whereas originally we was only doing refrigeration mm -hmm. and then the next thing we're looking after boilers air conditioning, 
checkouts, bakeries, all sorts. So, um, so is that, just let me interject. Is that is that something then that like because I, I, I find this fascinating a lot where you go, th this is what you do as a company, and then someone comes with an opportunity, and you go, yeah, yeah, we can do that, and yeah. you go, right, work it. I'm you, all for you, that. You, you wing it, and you go, right, yeah, I can do that. I'll figure yeah. that out, and you say yes, and then from your bail out, because yeah. I'm a bit of a yes man. I always think life's an opportunity. So you go, well, actually, yeah. Yeah, I could, and then you'll figure it out later. Definitely, because that I love, I love. I've done that all, all my work in really? life. Yeah, okay. yeah. I've gone into places where other colleagues of mine in different companies have gone. Well, we, we'll get back to you, and I've sort of gone into it and gone. No, we can, we can do this. Uh, that uh, to give you a, a for example, there was a very large company. Um, over, um, they start, they bought the old Nissan building over at Durrington. Huge, huge building. And um, we was in the times where we were struggling in the late 90s that when it all hit. And we got a phone call and a, and a yellow sticky was put on my desk. Can you go over uh, to a bookshop over in Durrington and give them a price for a new boiler? Yeah, of course I can. So I rung this number, and it was a, it was a guy called Mr. Money. Straight away, <laughs> I was attracted to that. <laughs> so so um, I made I made the the call, made the the appointment, and drove over there. And all of a sudden, I'm driving into this huge estate over in Durrington with these huge warehouses. And I've turned up, and there's a security guard there, and he said, and I said, uh, I don't know whether I'm in the right place, but I've come to see a Mr. Money. So he said, yeah, park your car over there. So got out, and he said, I'll, I'll walk you through. Well, I'm not kidding you. These warehouses was about three football pitches long each, and I was walking through them, and I thought, well, I don't know where this ball is going to go. <laughs> Anyhow, I met Mr. Money, who became a great pal, um, and we had a great business relationship and what have you and that turned it that wasn't putting a boiler in a in a in a bookshop that was heating all of little Hampton book services at that particular time which oh. was all these warehouses and they needed them heated and out of that in those days and that was the start of us coming back wasn't it it mm. was it yeah. was yeah. it was uh, nearly 300,000 pound installation contracts and I didn't have the I didn't have the means to do it. I didn't have the labour to do it. Um, and at that particular time, I had I was his apprentice in the seventies, and he ended up working with us, uh, old Mick. And yeah. and he said, "Where have you been?" I said, "Well, I've been over this place, Mick." And I said, "I don't know. I'm going to heat it, but I've got to get this price together." And he went, "We'll have a word with Brian." And so I, it was Brian, so he gave me Brian's number. Brian and myself got together. We got the manufacturers of the heaters down there. And 300,000 pounds later, we got the order and we're doing it. And that was the start back for us. And then Mr. Money asked me to uh, air condition all of the office suites in Columbia House. So we did that, which was another quarter of a million quid. That was the start back. But that's the bit that I love. That's the bit run to the challenge I'll always run to it never run away but interesting that call we we um, that call came about our, through our ad in the yellow pages it did and that yeah. particular year we really couldn't afford to advertise and it was about 10 grand ad wasn't it it was and we was you know should we do it it's a lot of money and, we, and in the end we said come on we've got to, we've got to do it we've got to take and, and it was a big decision a massive mm. decision to spend 10,000 in those budget, days, on no the yellow way. pages app, and we've done it, didn't we? And yeah. uh, that that call come about through. You might have to explain what the yellow pages yeah. are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to talk yeah. about inspiring the next generation and the younger listeners listening. They go, you know what? Yeah, yeah. 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 Brilliant culture, yeah. unbelievable. That's what a brilliant story. So yeah, but that again, like one of the reasons starting this is to you know, inspire people and listen to them type of journeys and when because when you are up against it and you and because uh, you'd be you'd be honest with me tell me at that time when you've got them CCJ and you're going and before you come back 
is there times that you was there times that you thought you know what we've got to call this a day no never no, never really never never ever no the, the, it's if you was going to start off down that journey then you've got to you've got to make sure you finish that journey definitely I don't know, I can't see is, the point when yeah. we're under pressure is when we're at our best mm. Like a wounded animal. Yeah. But again, I, I guess that does does that make that easier? You know, the fact that there's three of you sitting here, yeah. three yeah, of you to yeah, do it does. Yeah. It does. When I guess solo entrepreneurs, people on their own, maybe you got to find that sometimes with knowing that you've got each other to bounce that out. Having because yeah. well, people I have business really partners, really. and then you know, but maybe different family backgrounds, different ethoses, different work ethics, and yeah. as a business yeah. partner, when it's when you all come from the same ilk, you're all in it together, you all that. that. I wouldn't want to do anything in business without these two. No, Ricky, Ricky first. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I know that, you know, uh, we all have our holidays and all that, and that there might be a decision that needs to be made by one of us who's on holiday. And whether you come back and you, you don't like the decision, what you do know, you do know that the decision is made with the right intentions and what's for the benefit of the company. Mm. You can never question that. It might not be, you might have argued, perhaps we should have done it this way or that way. But ultimately, you, you know it's about the good of the company. And, mm. and with that, you, you can lay in the sunbed and enjoy the sun, you know? Love that, love that. I just again, like people listen to it and hopefully get some certainly what I take from it because you know difficult times in my business journey as well. But I, I love I love the fact that you just go up right, with our sleeves up this and just believe that we're not going to give up. We're not, we're, 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 the option yeah. is to pack up and go home when that's not an option. So yeah. let's let's crack on and let's go and make this happen. Yeah. Roll my sleeves up wherever, like you said, we go and work weekends. We do what we have to do. Yeah. We just got. to knuckle down and, mm. and the belief I guess that in what you're doing that we are going to get there we will we will come back and then like you say them, them opportunities present themselves mm. to but you to don't always you, you don't the three of you don't need to be dealing with the same issue the same problem yeah. you know like quite often like Chris Chris was a count so like there's I mean there was as you said there was babies coming in and stuff like that I I never really dealt with that bit uh, because they were dealing with it mm. So they didn't need me standing there looking in on it. What they needed me to do was be at the cold place, earning, yeah. earning, yeah. and yeah. That, and that's what I've done. And, and and sort of being a little bit logical, you know, because yeah. quite often, I mean, you go in a shop that you want to be served, and there's three people that are till <laughs> yeah. de dealing with someone bringing something back, and there's a queue a mile along. You think can't one of you deal with that or two of you? Yeah. Like, but it's so you, you've got to be clever with your time as You've well. You've always done that well where we've sort of respected one another's role within the business mm. and um, not interfered in what we're doing. No. Different strengths. You all bring well. a different dynamic. Yeah. That's why yes. I, I yeah. listen to you talk and know you a little bit. I, I get that's what you get from it. You yeah. all bring a different dynamic to, yeah. to the business, which I guess is... I mean, these two are technical. I wouldn't know how to fix... I wouldn't know one end of a boiler from another, to be <laughs> honest with you. Yeah. I, do, I know my place within the business and I'll mm. stick to doing that. But and that's the key thing for any business, isn't it? Everyone yeah. knows their strengths, weaknesses, what that looks like, and that's uh, round pegs, round holes. Yeah, love that, love that. Well, look, so I'll I give you another one. Is, uh, on. is it, it, we've got a water hygiene department, and that was again born out by the supermarket, because in those days the supermarkets the refrigeration was water cooled, and that was water cooled by water towers, and those things were ripe. For Legionella uh, and what have you. Mm. So, what they'd done, they hired a guy, this was the supermarket, to go around and do an audit on all their cooling towers. And at those particular times, I think they had over 130 cooling towers nationally. There was a lot of cooling towers, so there was a lot of potential problems. And um, I was, I, at that particular time, I was at it cleaning the pipe work in the towers which cooled the refrigeration unit down on the shop floor and out at the back in the coal store. And they did, they put this slideshow together, that's how <laughs> old it is. <laughs> they put a slideshow together and um, they showed these cooling towers in the right old state, you couldn't, you couldn't actually see them. And then they got to mine and where it was so boring, 
I used to paint the valves, the clean the, the plant rooms and make sure that the funeral towers were right. And as a consequence to that, I got called over by one of the, uh, by the MD of that supermarket I at, the, at the seminar. And uh, we got the contract nationally to, to do that. Mm. And that's, that's how the water hygiene business was born, was through me being bored. <laughs> it's as simple as that. I love it. I lo again, look. Didn't know anything about Legion Up. Didn't have a clue. See, that, that it j it's just, again, it's back to that, that mindset of going, there's an opportunity there, I'll go and yeah. do that. Whatever, that. whatever that looks like, yeah, yeah, I can do that. I'm, yeah, yeah, we can take care of that. And you go and figure it out. And you go Because people listen to this stuff uh, who are struggling, maybe. Or, and again, back to COVID, and you look at it and go, like, issues that come around if you've got a mindset that's open to opportunities open to pivoting or adapting in a certain way that's how you get stronger and you grow mm. and you, you, you yeah you, you move forward yeah <laughs> I, w I, w I want to talk about because obviously the your, your company values and again I want a culture w w which we've sort of has been a theme throughout throughout the conversation <laughs> but so you, you, your your company values: customer service, accountability, quality, and safety. W when did you when did you bring them in to play? W when were them values? Well, we've always had them. Always had is that, them. Is that yeah. been from the start, from when your dad? Yeah, yeah. yeah, but they've never been written down. Not yeah. the safety one and, and that yeah. come in later. Yeah, because yeah. if you remember, we we started in seventy one, mm. and the Health and Safety at Work Act didn't come out till nineteen seventy four. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and I can remember my dad coming home and moaning because uh, it was legislated then that that to, uh, the first part of compliance with the Health and Safety at Work Act was you had to display it in the workplace. So you had to mm. put this this poster up. Yeah. In the workplace, and 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 that was uh, oh, you, and and again, if you think of that era, a lot of these workforce. Were guys that are uh, you know in their twenties have been in World War Two, so when they come back, their their um, <laughs> risk uh, evaluation. I mean, they, you know, they've, they've been at war, so yeah. they 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 just had a different mindset. And, uh, and again, going back to that culture, sort of safety was uh, you know a bit. Of uh, that's a sort of wimp. It was that attitude. It mm. really was that mm. attitude. And, but of course, we all know how important it is. You know, you have to embrace it. it you do. Know. Yeah. But and, and again, you know, when when you, I, I mean, can you remember like when you see a company now? They're all logoed up, polo shirts, high vis, high yeah. vis, work boots, and stuff like that. I mean, you used to have the engineers coming in from the. Stuff they wore to the dinner party the, the year before. Do you know what I mean? Like the <laughs> old patent <laughs> shoes and flares <laughs> and <laughs> the colour. And, and you did, you know, and, and you did. It's just just a different time, and, yeah. and uh, you know, you. He no did get them white corporate. overalls in the end. Why yeah. he got them white overalls? <laughs> I do not know. Yeah, what, what, he what, got them what white, overalls. white overalls. Yeah. You know, but those uh, things, with th those uh, values, were always with us. Yeah. Um, but as you grow your business get to certain points you know when we hit a million again you have to evaluate yourself and you do your ISO um, accreditations and people say you should write your values down and uh, communicate that to your staff yeah. and that's what we've done we've picked those values because they're the ones we've always worked with they're dear to sort of our ethic and um, that's what we've done we've got them uh, we do a, a staff engagement day every year we've done one in Sussex Cricket Club this year yeah. in July and we, we um, engage with them what those values mean to us go over that we do a little quiz so they're, they're um, sort of engaged in the idea of that as well so we try and communicate that to them when people come on um, and they have their inductions that's all um, part of their induction process as well so we like to try and communicate that through so that you know accountability I want someone to be accountable for not just turn up, throw it in a uh, bucket or a pint. They want to be able to get a card in there and go clean up afterwards and um, check it's working, check the pressures are right, and everything else. So yeah. that when they walk away, that customer's got the best job. You know what they ultimately asked for. Yeah, yeah. I love, and I, I guess like 
a lot of it people talk about company values and I guess again back to the whole family ethos and your own values as individuals that that they align with what your company values are because a company doesn't you know your work's there and your life's there but actually that has an impact on that doesn't it so yeah. if, that, if yeah. you're Absolutely. if your values in in life and who you are you're accountable yourselves as individuals then that relates the same within your business yeah, yeah. yeah. and if they're aligned that's where yeah it's, it's more authentic i guess is the point i'm, I'm yeah. making yeah and that's how that and that relates then to the staff i guess yeah you get what you've got mm. it's as simple as that mm. you know we 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 wear our art honestly we're passionate about what we do we love the people we love the team mm. it's great you know sometimes i, I think that um there's a they get a little bit confused with the passion and uh, and all the rest of it but we just value the team i love people i love mm. meeting new people i love talking to people uh, i love working with with the guys and what have you we all do mm. when we go to sleep at night i, I haven't got you know i don't have to worry about it and I think it's great value in that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember you you always bring that story up now and again when we both went on a golf trip or a golf day years ago and you come into the office and you was a bit wound up because a lot of the people you played golf with all had these, you know, uh, expensive lifestyles, big cars, and they had, and they had big holidays, and I was going into big... Uh, we have bugger all. And he said, why, <laughs> why aren't we doing that? Why aren't we doing that? I said, well, look, I've, I've, it can't happen. We, we're doing this, this and this. And, and as a, a couple of years later, these people who you were playing golf with, they were go, being liquidated, going bust, running to other countries from the tax man and all the rest of Over, it. Overspent. Overspent. And, um, cut your cost accordingly. Yeah, you've got to cut your cost. There's, there's a you know, there's a big saying that isn't a true one. And, um, yeah, we've done true, it. We, yeah, we built it slowly methodically Steady. and took our time and honestly and honestly that's it and that again oh, you used earlier that integrity is such like you said that, that what I'll take back was saying what our 15 years or whatever I've been in business one thing I know that I could go to bed at night put me head on a pillar yeah. so no I haven't yeah. Yeah. screwed people over yeah. whether that yeah. be the client staff whatever never it is. done that yeah. Yeah. Just and think Sussex that. business community is a small community mm. and I don't want to turn up and feel embarrassed or not look at I, I want to look someone in the eye, shake their hand, and have a drink, and, and a laugh with them. Yeah. And I don't want that reputation of being someone who's just charming yeah. or something. It's not. Yeah. This city is yeah. like a village. We all know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, cause where, wh how many staff are you at the moment? What lot like, of engineers? What's, what's it's getting up near fifty at, at the moment. But, but um, I guess that we're like any other company at the moment. We're struggling to recruit. Mm. Mm. We could do with sixty. Okay. We're struggling, but does that then that though I guess to then that sort of value is that is a culture more difficult to create the bigger you get from that like when there's 10 or 15 of you yeah. or whatever yeah. it's easier got, to get those values. There's a skill shortage out there, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, because it's not just sort of getting people like like a, a, a gas engineers and what they need to have done their apprenticeship to become competent trainees and stuff like that so it's, it's not just a case of grabbing someone and being able to put them in a van and send them straight out yeah you, you need to know that they're you competent can't give them three yeah. weeks training and mm. then send them out there yeah you, it's it's a what is this five well it's it's, it's, it's a five-year year. apprenticeship but to be quite honest you know it's um to when you go out there you're still learning for another two to three years on top of that so mm. It really it's an eight year apprenticeship to before be you're competent. anywhere near where you need to be. Yeah. And talk to so then I'm interested that about like what's your thoughts around sort of apprenticeships and obviously education side of things like university and wh where were you on on that sort of you're obviously a fan of apprenticeships I'm assuming. Yeah. Massive yeah. fan of apprenticeships. I mean we've got uh, three that's going through uh, apprenticeships now mm -hmm. that have just started. We've got another three that's coming out the other end, so six in total out of uh, you know uh, uh, a company of uh, fifty is pretty good percentage. Yeah. Um, and we've got an uh, apprenticeship, uh, apprentice in the office as well. We've got an apprentice, so, yeah. yeah, in the office as well. So massive uh, investment for us, but a worthwhile one. Someone's got to do it. Uh, service I think director. 
wasn't a was her apprentice. Was her apprentice. Really yeah, first yeah. show progression. Yeah. So it's um, yeah, it's a journey, but it's it it's it's banging the drum really, getting it out there that this is a trade that really is is could be a fantastic career for you. Mm-hmm. And you know, where people think, oh, gas engineer. Well, a, you know, or an air conditioning engineer. Do you know what they go in? all sorts of environments mm. you know they can be in hotels they can be in gymnasiums they can be in restaurants they can be in cinema they can go in any environment you want and they're seeing all aspects of life mm. and uh, it's it's a good life it, it, it is a good life mm. you know and uh, it pays well it rewards well it's technical it, you're forever using your brain to work out the problem and if you're into problem solving and that's your thing. Mm. It really is, you know. I, I love, I love, because I'm, I'm a fan as well. I think of apprentice. Cause I, I, I wasn't the most academic at school. I'll be honest with you. So I didn't. I failed A levels and stuff, and didn't do. And I, I look at the kids now, and, and like mine, I've, well, I've got twins who are seven. And I think about that career path, and you know, university and what that looks like. But great if they want to be a lawyer or. Yeah. a doctor or something like that you've got to go to university to do that. Yeah. Great. To I'll, I'll yeah. support that no problem yeah. but I'd much rather them come to me as well either with that or with the thought process of going you know I want to go into this is the career I want to go into what's the path to get into that come yeah. up with a business idea go and travel the world rather than just go to university to go and get with a no degree for, with no, yeah. yeah with no yeah. like just three years at a university mm. to get a degree that potentially you're not going to go and do that like I've because for me, the education system potentially, in my eyes, that, that we don't teach a lot of the fundamental life skills in, in school these days. It, it, or no, I, 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 I sort of see that, uh, you know, when, when my lad uh, was at school, he, he sort of went, went to the open days and, and you know, rightly so, they're, they're, they're pushing, sort of, you, you've got to get your grades to get to university, but it's almost, if you don't want to go that university path, it's almost like you failed and actually, uh, as I said, I've had some great times at work, or some f- funny, funny times, you know, uh, and it, it's just a great industry, you know, and, and um, I think what you said, university, you want to be a doctor, surgeon, lawyer, yeah, that's, that's the way to go, but, you know, not for everything, not for everything. I think we haven't got enough of the opposite sex in our industry either. That's what we, mm. that's, mm. Yeah, yeah, desperate to, to, uh, to, to get the, uh, ladies and uh, in involved in their industry. There's, there's wh- great wh- why is that? Uh, uh, I think uh, f- because a it's a no. historical thing. It's mm. it's seen as that male environment, mm. and uh, I don't think that's right. And, yeah. and I think that it, you know that anybody going into our business now um, should be app- should be applauded. Uh, you you know you have to have good qualifications at, at school and at mm. college. You need to be good at maths. You need to be good at science. Um, you need to be pretty good at uh, English as well um, to be able to do all the calculations, work out all of the problems and what have you of air, uh, in air industry and problem solve. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, you know, women are pretty good at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife sells me. She solves all the problems in doors. So yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, so we've talked about a lot of the challenges. I want to t- tell me about the running company for that amount of time. Tell me about maybe some uh, not standout highlights for you, like running the business. Was it turning it around at that point in in the late nineties? Or t- talk to me about like, as we're t- as we're recording this now. We've just found out that you've been nominated for a Sussex Business Award. Is that that correct? I yeah, it is. Yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Large company of the year. I think is the, is the right. It so is. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, tell tell me about that. Is, is there any standout highlights for you so over the journey? Well, uh, mine was, was yesterday morning. I just see the two vans that we've just had rewrapped for our new marketing. That was exciting to see that. <laughs> so, so you've got, you know, simple as that, so really. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can get a buzz out of something like, like we're doing a rebrand. And uh, I've got to say, I thought they looked fantastic. Really, really pleased with the outcome. Mm. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so it's a... Celebrating little wins like that, I guess, li- over Little over wins, yeah, yeah, and it still keeps the passion going. And, mm. 
uh, yeah, you know, I had a good walk around the band. I, 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 uh, I, I wasn't involved in it. That's probably why they look so good. <laughs> 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 All my ideas were ditch, which is probably a good thing. But they, they, they uh, look really, I'm not really, really pleased, yeah. really happy with them, you know. So uh, little wins like that, yeah. really. Because I guess as well, like, again, one thing I often talk about is the, the journey of, uh, like you said, d- listening to you guys talk and about the fun that you have there and the fact that you've got each other and that banter and, and creating that enjoyment part of, of the work process. As tough as those times are when you're in the late 90s and you're in there during COVID, whatever them points look like, that there's got to be that I- the enjoyment of the journey over that process. Oh, massive, absolutely. massive. I mean, you just asked is you know one of the highlights for me. One of the highlights is seeing progression mm. with your your team. I mean, now we've got James Beresford Ward, who came on as the water hygiene manager, um, our general manager. Then uh, decided to move on to pastures new, and um, we he recommended that. Uh, James to the job we was somewhat hesitant mm. if we was honest in, yep. in those days um, but through COVID he went on a massive learning curve and he was absolutely brilliant and he shone and uh, he has then gone on the journey with us and he's continued to shine and as a consequence to that, you, you you know, from my point of view now, I'm in the early 60s. I need to recognise that I'm not as quick and as uh, business uh, academic as as I was, and what have you. And it's and it's time for new blood to come through. You want the company to go on to the next level, and I think that with me, with my brothers, I've done. I could still take it on, but I think it's time for someone else. And you've got to recognise that I- in business and, and, and make sure that the, the company is still going on that upward journey. And we've done that and we've made him MD. You know, he's now the new managing director of TSS. We've done that back in July. July, yeah. Yeah, and... Um, is, is that hard for you though, Andy? Like, I, I know you're obviously you're, you're chairman now, aren't you, Carl? But is that hard to maybe take a step back a little bit? Sometimes, yeah, sometimes because, you know, it, uh, to a degree, it was my train set, and now <laughs> yeah. all of a sudden someone's got hold of my train set, <laughs> and uh, they they better d- deal with it in the, r- with the respect <laughs> that they that they need to. But he is, and he and he's great, and he's going to take it on further than I than I did. You know, he's he's at the next level now. The other one is is Kieran Bolter. He started off with us as a as an apprentice electrician. Um, he's grown and grown and grown and and got all and embraced the management side. He started he went as a service manager, and now he's a, he's a director of the company. And uh, you know he's got fantastic experience. But they've both got that youth. You know they've both been there middle to late 30s they got the bit between their teeth they're the next thing in 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 tss uh, on it on its journey mm. and whatever you and i'm out there really if you like doing a bit of mentoring and and uh marketing the business and and smoozing as they used to call <laughs> it in my day you know so so that's what we've done and and it and it's and it's working so those are the highlights for me of that progression, seeing people coming through, mm. knowing that you've had a an input in their journey and made an impression on them mm. in their journey, uh, and whether that's a right one or a wrong one, uh, time will tell. But I'm, you know, I've got every confidence in them as we all have, mm. you know, all three of us. Yeah, it's exciting. I yeah. think we're we're quite forward looking, aren't we? Yeah, we don't dwell on mistakes we've made in the past. Um, but learn from them. But learn. learn from them. Yeah. Always learn. And uh, we move on quickly, don't we? And uh, we've always done that. And we've never blamed a- a- any of us for, for making those mistakes. And we have at times. Believe me, we've made some horrendous ones. <laughs> um, but like you say, you, you pick pick up, learn from them, and carry on. And we've always done that. And I've enjoyed that. I've always enjoyed working, uh, not just us, with with all the team. Mm. I think it's uh, 
testament to them all. They all, mm. all stood by us, all, you know, through thick and thin. It's been great. It's good, good times. Mm, yeah. And there's others that's moved on outside of TSS mm. and that have gone to uh, further their career outside of TSS. Very proud of them. Mm. They've, you know, we gave them that platform mm. and that springboard to be able to do that, and they recognise that, and they, you know, they've come back and tell us that, and that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're you still know, in get touch a lot with from them. that. Still, still in touch, you know. What then does it? What then does success look like to you guys? Like, do, do you at this point now? Do you sit back and go, or like by the sounds, like you said, always forward thinking. And that level of self-awareness, I guess, to be able to go, actually, where we've got TSS to, to get it to that next level, maybe when I'm not the right person to do that, yeah. I've got to put this other person mm. out yeah. there. But what, where do you sit on that thing? of? Because uh, I'm conscious around the narrative around success, about it being a narrative around people's financial gain and what that sort of looks like and how you are with your business. But what, just talk to me about that. What does success look like to you? Just, just keep going forward, really. And, yeah. and, and w another bit, going back to the old man, I mean, he, he always said, surround yourself with good people. Yeah. Simple, simple stuff, but, you know, and uh, just surround yourself. And, and just keep driving it forward, you know. And, uh, I love going around and seeing uh, the vans and knowing that they're doing a good job and uh, the relationships we've got with clients. You know, I've got clients that go back 15 years. And, and again, see, seeing how their businesses have grown and developed, and um, well, I didn't know. I, I didn't know. Didn't college, know you know, twenty-three years. I've yeah, been you know, and, and and again, you know, I'm, I'm working, as I say, very much in, in the our times. I was, I was on the tools, mm. you know, uh, and and the the people I'm dealing with, the clients, they were pretty much on the tools, and now they're in a position, and I was seen their journey as well as mine you know mm. seen it mirrored and it's, it's great you know okay, and I, I guess uh, how, how important then is that like legacy to you because obviously your dad you carried on your dad's legacy with the thing is, is that important to you very yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. I think it, it your 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 question was is is um, how do you measure success mm. and I think the fact that you've still got the business and you can go to sleep at night and know that you've done a, a pretty good job, I think that's how you measure success, mm. to be honest. So uh, if you're satisfied with your lot, yeah. I think that says it all, really. Because that, that then, that I, love, I love that in from listening to it in the sense of that, that feeling of fulfilment and contentment that you get. Yeah, it don't matter yeah. about the big flash cars and, and all that. It's nice. Of course, it's lovely. Yeah. And the lovely holidays and all the rest of it. Uh, yeah, who's, who's not going to say uh, no to that? Yeah. But I think it's got to be the, the satisfaction within yeah. uh, and what have you, and knowing that you've done your best. Yeah. And, and I'd hate to think I went to bed knowing... That I didn't do my best, and I know these guys are exactly the same. You've got to keep pushing. Might the sound yeah. twee, but it's it, you've got to live with that. Yeah, and it's we we got a nice lifestyle as well, haven't we? I mean, yeah. we, we, yesterday we got uh, got invited to Plumpton. Oh, we did create your pod. Yeah, 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 Matt, yeah which I know. Was a Matt great day. We met lovely people. What a way to spend a Monday, you yeah. know. And um, today we're sitting here with you, Lovely. doing a podcast. Know. Bloody hard work. When I <laughs> <laughs> when grafting I today, <laughs> boys. You're grafting today. I don't. When I looked at my you. school report all those years ago, I never think I'd be sitting doing a podcast <laughs> with you. So. No. Here we go. I'd have been looking out the window now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to plug out. We're winning. Well, look, I'll, the one thing I have to ask, because I, well, it's, like I said, the, this has become a little bit cathartic. It's almost like therapy for me, I guess, the, the podcast. Cause I, I don't want to talk about things I'll potentially struggle with and on my business journey, but. Work-life balance. What is like over the whole course of the journey and and doing that? Do, do you feel that you've achieved that? Is is there been sacrifices along the way from personal life that that type of thing? Talk There's always sacrifices, yeah, on a personal level and well, business level. Yeah, yeah, I don't know anybody that uh, owns their own business and has run their own business for as long as we have or shorter uh, 
doesn't have to make sa- if they haven't made any sacrifices there or they're extremely extremely clever or they just don't care uh, and what have you I, there, there will always be sacrifices um, yeah that that impact on the family impact on you but as long as you realize and they realize that you're doing it for all the right reasons and they're with you on the journey i think then you you pretty you cracked mm. it all yeah i think that's that's the thing isn't it? it's getting the buy-in from everyone around and, and how you feel about that with you you know trying to have that people say what's a work life balance and you go well actually because I love my work like you listen to you talk about yeah, it you can tell how passionate you are about oh, we love TSS it, yeah. you can tell that like from the minute I've met you guys and, and, and you tell I remember even during COVID we come to the offices and you've done a, a seminar I was there and you just you could tell the passion that you talk and still today that's what I can hear coming out of you so when if you do love your work it's not like it's not a bad thing to say I want to spend not time work. at work it's yeah not yeah work. It's, it's a hobby it's, it's a yeah, hobby yeah, it's, it's it's because yeah. you love it and it's tr- and trying to, and, and of course you like spending time with the family as well, and that's an important part. But as l- and like I said earlier, I guess my I allude to the fact that there's that th- that has an impact on that. So there's, th- but as long as they they align in the values that you're trying to build, it's difficult at times because yeah. I think at, in COVID, yeah. I I spent uh, a lot of hours at work, yeah. and um, I obviously did back in the late nineties, but then everybody else was at work as well. And obviously in COVID, I was there till quite late in the evenings, and uh, I was coming home, and, and uh, everybody, as w- you know, even though you live in Stork Den, you remember it, COVID, the weather was great for yeah, them yeah, at the time. Amazing, yeah. And I, was, I remember driving home at times, and, and the, the all the roads were packed with cars where everybody was down on the beach. My wife used to say to me, well, why didn't you, you know, can you get home early or whatever, and uh, everybody else is at home, but... It had to be done. There was things that needed to be done mm. in the office and, and new strategies that I had to work with and everything to get the company to where it was. Yeah. Um, but luckily, I've got a, a, a fantastic wife and she <laughs> understood and uh, she was with me on the journey. You well, know. we had to support him, you know, so uh, in everything that he done, although we was out doing... We were and very that's proud. where we come together. I was very, very proud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Best tan I've ever had. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God, we had that, we had that, that nice weather. <laughs> God, yeah. uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's fascinating. Like I say, uh, it's something that I, I often just question about. And th- 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 like you said, you, there is running your own business. So actually, do you, how do you guys feel about like, switch? Do you switch off? From, you mentioned it earlier, I think, Andy, about coming home and, you know, never really off because no. the business is always there but no i love it, 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 it you know it, i can be sitting on a, a laying on a sunbed in tenerife or italy or or, or wherever and uh, i'll still be thinking about the business shoot what about if we do this what about if we do that i can be driving along and thinking about it yeah it's in, it's incessant really it, it's um it's just the way that you're you're made, mm. uh, and it's not ideal. I th- there is sometimes when I wish I could not think about it, mm. uh, and whatever. But that's that's who I am. It's part of my makeup. That that's it really. Mm. Fair enough. Right, listen, we're coming towards the end. We're going to before we do the quick fire questions, just talk to me. What what what, what does the future look like for TSS? It looks great. Yeah, it looks, it great. looks good. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it Hopefully, really with an uh, award in, in yes. it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, we're, we're trying to grow it still. You know, as I said, we're, we're forever trying to raise the, the standard. Uh, we, what we really want to be, we want to be the best in the southeast. Mm. You know, it's, it's a, a proper proper brand name, quality engineering at its best. Uh, and, and just grow it from there, bringing people through, making sure they're, they're working to, to the best standards that we can deliver, you know, uh, and be a real mm. uh, quality uh, company. And, and it's, I think Andrew said it earlier, you know, we're, we're selective sometimes on, on who, who we work with as well, mm. you know, because, um, you know, you, you want the best for your clients, but your clients got to want the best as well. Mm. And, and that's what we're trying to, to 
deliver. It's a moving target. But it's a moving target. We're, we're you know, we're, we're constantly looking at ourselves, how we can improve ourselves. As Steve said earlier, we're rebranding. We're looking at all those things, new vans and everything. Uh, investment into the employees, putting them through their training programs, um, keeping their staff retention, which is key to us at the moment. Um, and bringing new skills in where we can. We've got new managers, as we said, and directors, and we're uh, showing career progression for people. So we're trying to put all those procedures in place. Financially, we're secure, and we work very closely with our accountants, Watsons, to, to um, look at our budgets and everything for the future. So I, I'm actually uh, very, I always have been, very optimistic for the mm. future, and I look forward to what's ahead. Amazing. Well, look, I certainly wish you, you guys continue. So it's been fascinating having having a chat with you and learning about, you know, from a personal point of view, lessons learned and listening to you talk about, especially the culture and the ethos and, and what you've got and love the, what you say, yes, we'll figure it out later and, and look at where it's got. So it's, it's amazing. Um, look, we're going to finish with our quick fire questions, as we always do. Um, I want to pick on one of you to, to do this. So, s Steve, tell me one piece of advice you give to your 18 year old self. Go with your instinct. Love that. First instinct, go with it. Love that. Chris, who's inspired you in your career and why? Mum and Dad. Mum and Dad are great. They were such a tight bond. My dad was always the uh, business end of it. My mum was very supportive. They brought us up in a fantastic way. They were great. I'd, I'd assume that would be the same answer for uh, all three of you. It would, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll get that, I'll get that, definitely. Um, all of you, have you got a, a, a book or a podcast that you've listened to that's had an impact on, on you and your careers, any one of you? Well, funny, I listened to the podcast with Mike Monk. Oh, really? Yeah, and I thought he was inspiring. I thought he was great. Brilliant. Brilliant. Very honest man. Yeah. Told him so yesterday. Really? Yeah. So I'd never met Mike before. Oh, wow. Uh, and what have you. But I liked his integrity. I liked his honesty. And... Um, yeah, and what he's done. Yeah, I felt, uh, and uh, we had a we had a ten fifteen minute chat yesterday. It was no, it was nice to okay. meet him. So I'd, yeah, I like that podcast. I thought it was great. Mate, that's very kind. I love it. Yeah, he's he's a great guy, Mike. I've known him for for a while, and yeah, very old school with a uh, with a sales. Love that. Brilliant. Yeah, love that. Uh, again, for me, what a learning. Cause this has been like an education for me. Like that's why <laughs> I, I love it so much. But listen, we're going to finish off, Annie. Wind us up with your one rule for living a fulfilled life. Just do the right thing and make sure you can sleep at night. Love that. Gentlemen, honestly, it's been a true honour to have you guys on. Oh, it's been great to be here. Yeah, thank, thank you very you much. much. Enjoyed, it. enjoyed it. And yeah, enjoyed it. Listen, I've got everything for for you for the, for them Sussex Business Awards. So let's uh, so let's say so. we get we get that at something in the trophy cabinet. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Listen, thanks again. Wish you continued success. And um, that, as they say, is a wrap. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sam. Awesome. I believe every business owner has a story to tell. Through seeking true, authentic insights about the entrepreneurial journey, I provide a platform for our peers to share their stories and inspire those that listen. This is the County Business Talks podcast, powered by Picture Book Films.